What is up, Earth Noids and Space Noids? I am just a simple new type. And in this episode, we're returning to UC 0087 as we continue the mystery behind Gundam Werewolf. Last time, the Hekati was ambushed in a surprise attack by the Ayug. Rasaid was murdered inside of the cockpit, and none of the Hekati crew understands how it happened. This time, Leto and Talbot work together to figure out who killed Rasaid. So let's get into this. Before getting into this, many of you have mentioned that Werewolf suspiciously looks like Gundam Mark IV, and the similarities are too close to ignore, so let's break it down. The ORX-012 Gundam Mark IV originally debuted in the SD Gundam Generation games. It was built off the data of the Mark III and developed by Augusta Labs. It is equipped with Incom, a quasi psychomu weapon that was flawed, but laid the foundation for the Mark V. This sounds eerily similar to the WW system in Werewolf. This system controls wired funnels. Other weapons include a beam saber, beam rifle, and a shield. As the crew looks over Rasaid's body, they are confused as to what happened. Ajak Anjin, the Hekate doctor, comes in to help, but he is dead. There is nothing he could do. He takes his body to do an autopsy. Lieutenant Robinson helps carry the body out onto a stretcher. Ajak finds a bullet wound. Even though the cockpit was completely sealed, the doctor is way too excited about the mystery of it all. Ugh, doctors are tone deaf. Read the room. Medical officer Merritt Nevreen helps him. As everyone wonders what happened, Ensign Krakata bluntly states that he was shot by someone on their ship. Bally Kidu begins blaming Pio Talbot as he was the only one to have access to the Gundam. He also knows that Rasaid bullied him. As they fight, Leta comes over and says, Guys, we live in the future. We have logs for everything. They check the logs to find out that the hatch was only opened when Rasaid got in the Gundam and when the Hakate crew forced it open. It wasn't open during the mission. There is, however, records of it being opened 11 hours ago, during their last downtime. This leads back to square one, as any one of the crew members could have been the one to open the hatch during downtime. Captain Lycus and Okorinu come to the hangar. They are put in a position where they have to travel back to the Earth's sphere while fighting Neo Zeon, all while trying to solve this mystery. Her plan is to hold a democratic vote in 12 hours on who they believe is the suspect. The person with the most votes will be held in the brig until they could get EFF to investigate the situation. Valley continues talking shit to Talbot, but Okorinu gives him the death stare. Lycus goes to take a shower. After telling all of her crew members, Okorinu asks if this is the best path forward. She said this will merely create a scapegoat. They are currently at war and don't have anyone capable of conducting an investigation. A colony can be destroyed in the blink of an eye. She has no concern for one life in the grand scheme of things. Ogarino hands her a towel and notices that he is trembling. The artist makes Lycus look like one of the craziest people possible. Ogarino says I'm so turned on, but you are so crazy. Talbot goes to Leto's quarters. Her room looks like the mailroom and it's always sunny. She is trying to figure out the mystery, but she tells Talbot that he will be accused and hanged for this. Right now, Vali is most likely spreading rumors about him. Also, he is merely a mechanic and isn't an elite pilot. He could be replaced. Leto mentions that Rasaid also sexually harassed her. Ah, uh, the first episode wasn't sexy then. She was most likely just going with it out of fear. Now I feel gross. She got close to Rasid to try to gather evidence against him, but then he got himself killed. She is also a likely candidate to be hanged as well. Remember, this is the Titans, and they sacrifice others for the sake of their special ace pilots. They are like a Pennsylvania football team. They just throw everything under the rug. Leto wants Talbot to help her solve this case in the next 12 hours. In his injury, Krat Nix monitors the Hekate closely. In the hangar is the Gyan Kai. Ten hours until the vote. Leto and Talbot head to the infirmary. Ajak is doing an autopsy while eating what looks like an Omaibo. What is up with Gundam mangas and Omaibos? Talbot wonders how he could eat so casually while next to a dead body. Probably smells too. Ajax says the bullet was military standard, but what is even more interesting is that there is no gunpowder residue. Leto mentions that she smelled no gunpowder in the cockpit either. Talbot wonders if it was using railgun technology. This is easily accessible for most crew members to make as they use them in their mobile suit tech. If that were the case, that means they were trying to hide their tracks and this was all premeditated. The doctor says that all he knows is that the shot occurred after he landed. Ajax says he is expecting a dramatic solution, not shady at all. Merritt tells the doctor to have a little bit more tact. She hopes Talbot could find the culprit. Merritt and Talbot knew each other before becoming Hakate crew members. They grew up in the same town and never seen each other again until they were assigned to the Hakate. 
Also, last episode, I said that Krokata was the one who found the Hotto. It was actually Talbot, and it is tagging along with him. Ajak is still focused on the murder. Either someone spoofed the cams and logs to hide their traces, or there was some mechanism from the inside. The latter seems implausible, as Ra's Said would have seen it. Suddenly, a random soldier comes yelling for Ra's Said. This is Hakate operator Urume Fluor. She comes in screaming, saying that he promised they would be married and would have a life together. As Ra's Said has been pulling this game on Leto as well, it seems it is merely another fling given false promises. They now have another suspect, but if she is guilty, then she just put on one hell of a show. Talbot wants to question her, but Leto knows they won't get any answers. She says, oh my dear Talbot, they instead go to Ra's Said's quarters to find Robinson Schreiker. She is standing guard as a roommate is threatening to file complaints as she thinks she is entitled to Ra's Said's stuff. Robinson feels bad for looking a blind eye when Ra's Said was harassing Talbot, so they let him look into the room. Robinson feels bad as he has always felt like Ra's Said's mentor. Leto finds a secret data file taped on the inside of the storage unit. She reads the file to find records of Ra's Said trafficking drugs to EFF and Titan soldiers. Robinson feels even worse as he truly didn't know the real Ra's Said. They have to head out in the Gundam. Lycus allows them to head out, but Ocarino is skeptical as usual. She tells him that it is the murder scene, so it is only natural for them to want to investigate the scene of the crime. Meanwhile, Arume is emotionally distraught and she has a knife. Eight hours until the vote. Leto pilots the Gundam with Talbot and Haru, which is what this Haru goes by. Robinson is in the Pale Rider D2. Since Leto is still green, if the enemy approaches, she must head back to the ship as she has passengers. Robinson is amazed that she would even want to pilot the Gundam as both Valley and Krakata think it is eerie. He feels as though the machine is a monster that took Ra Said's life, but Leto doesn't believe in that nonsense and wants to get to the facts. That is when they are attacked by Krat Nix and his Gyan Kai. The MS-15K Gyan Kai was originally introduced in SD Gundam G Generations. This unit was developed at Axis shipyards after the One Year War. It is based off of the Gyan Krieger from Garen's Greed. It specializes in high maneuverability and close combat, which was already the original Gyan's focus. It is on par with the Bawu, but like the original Gyan, it was very hard to manufacture and mass produce. Much of the data for this unit will live on in the Gazelle and Gazar. It is equipped with a large beam sword that flips out, and a shield which also stores needle missiles. Kretnix wants an honorable fight and attacks Robinson and the Pale Rider. He uses the needle missile to incapacitate Robinson. On the Indra, Nix's right-hand man wonders why he is playing with the mobile suits. Krat Nix is attacking the Gundam. Leto notices that she is using its lance, which requires a linear attack. She is able to parry the lance. Leto has never seen this kind of power before. She thinks the Gyan is a monster, which is ironic considering most of her teammate thinks the Gundam is a monster. The Gundam goes down. Krat Nix goes in for an attack, but the Gundam takes out its beam saber and slices off the Gyan's leg. The Gyan tries to make its retreat and Leto chases after. Robinson tells them to pull back. The cockpit is consumed by space. She sees a silhouette of someone holding a gun. Like Ra's Said, she is shot. She says that she solved the mystery. Leto suddenly wakes up in the infirmary on board the Hakate. Haru and Talbot are next to her. She wants to know how they got back to the ship. Talbot is confused as it was her that piloted the mobile suit back. She also isn't wounded like Ra's Said, but it felt real. Robinson wonders if she is a new type that unlocked something inside of her. He says bad news for the two. For one, they were passed out for five hours, which means they only have three hours left until the vote. Second, Robinson informs them that the data regarding Ra's Said's drug trafficking has been stolen while they were out. Robinson puts the blame on himself. Crazy Arume is spying on them and laughing. Kratnix's right-hand man is amazed that the Gundam was able to take off his Gyan leg. During this time, the Titans and Axis are currently allies against the Ayuk. Krat's mission goes against their treaty. They have to play it safe. They did get good intel, however. Cassie Nord comes to the hangar. She is mad that Nyx didn't allow her to sortie. She is a cyber new type. Nyx's subordinate tells her to be quiet and she threatens to rip off his nuts. In the Hakate mess hall, Talbot is getting frustrated that they can't figure out this mystery. Krokato comes to join them. 
He thinks that it is a ploy by Axis from the outside. He isn't into Valley emotionally manipulating people to go against Talbot. For him, it really comes down to trusting Lieutenant Robinson, and it seems he trusts them. Krakata says that after she passed out, Robinson was desperately calling out to them. Rasaid's death seems to be really messing with him. Lycus approaches Robinson. He seems to be getting too close to Leto and Talbot. He says that this isn't going to go over like last time. Lycus says that she will simply cover it up again, but he won't be a part of it this time. He doesn't care if Lycus is Basque's favorite. They head to the hangar where Leto tells something to Talbot that she didn't want to say in front of Kukata. Essentially, she believes that she may have solved the mystery, but she needs Talbot's help with one more thing before they uncover the truth. And that will do it for this episode. For a good locked box mystery, everyone has to be just the worst human being, so you question everyone's motives. And let me tell you, this crew is full of terrible people. The question is, why didn't Leto get shot like Ross Haid? Next time, Leto will gather people on the bridge and tell everyone who she thinks the killer is. But that will do it for now, new types. Remember, you are reading a story about the Titans. You didn't think they were going to be good people, did you? Peace.